Dale? Hi. Well, I, I'd like to say I think that it, there's no point in having a pulmonary embolus if it doesn't leave you with a good story. <laughs> and, 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 and there's no point in having a pulmonary embolus if you don't have a good T-shirt. <laughs> and the T-shirt I'm wearing now is the T-shirt from the bicycle race during which I had my pulmonary embolus. And I finished second to last. So it was a, a miserable performance in a hill climb. My, my story begins four years ago when I woke up one morning peeing blood instead of urine. And as a trained medical professional, I recognized that that was wrong. And <laughs> I, I was attending on an inpatient service at the time, taking care of the, the leukemics in the hospital. So I showed up an hour early to work and, and had a CT scan done of my urinary tract and the necessary laboratory tests. And by the time I and my intravenous pole had finished making rounds on the patients in the morning, uh, no patient commented on it, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I knew that I had a mass in my bladder and I had certain contingencies in, in place in case something bad happened over the rest of the weekend. And by that Monday noon, which is two days later, I had lost three of my major goals in life. I wanted never to have a cystoscopy, <laughs> never to have a Foley catheter, and never to have chemotherapy. And they were all gone in one morning. OK, well, over the next couple of years, I had several trips back to the operating room to have little bits and pieces curated out. And I missed about a year and a half of my life for this, of, of most of the things I like to do, like bicycling and camping and that sort of thing. And in September of 2005, I was invited to go to Germany to participate in a race of a special type of bicycle called a, a Velomobile, which I'm involved in building and promoting as a hobby. And I thought, wow, what a great way to celebrate being back. So I flew over to Frankfurt and drove up to Biebertal by Gießen, where the race was being held. And I borrowed a, a racing recumbent tricycle for the event. And I, I stayed with the pack over the 65 kilometers that were the cross-country part, but it ended with an extreme hill climb. And I, w I wasn't going to do the extreme hill climb, but the race master was a friend of mine, and he said, you know, it'll make you feel you've really recovered. Nobody's going to give a shit if you get a good time or not. So, okay. And he pinned a number on me. OK, okay. so I'll, I'll climb the hill. So I, I was about 15th starter up the hill, and I had a actually a pretty respectable time at 250 and 500 meters, and then I didn't show up at the one kilometer checkpoint. <laughs> and it was because I'd had the worst air hunger I'd ever had in my life, and I was sitting off in a corner thinking two thoughts. One was, huh, so this is what a heart attack feels like. <laughs> the other, or the other was, gee, I really don't have any aerobic capacity back. Despite the fact that I'm a hematologist and deal with clotting disorders all the time, and had, a, had cancer in a long plane flight, the idea of a pulmonary embolus never crossed my mind. <laughs> so as we like to say in medicine, denial is not just a river in Egypt. Um, we're actually very good at it as a, as a coping mechanism. It's a highly effective coping mechanism, but not always the best one. Um, several weeks passed. But, by the way, the outcome was that the race master gave me a three minute no penalty pause, and I finished the hill um, very slowly. Um, weeks passed, more weeks than I'd like to admit, and I had a routine follow-up CT scan for my bladder cancer, and I was waiting for the results of the CT, expecting the radiology guy to call and say, the images are fine, you can go back to work, and instead the radiologist called and said, don't bike home. Don't bike home. Uh-oh. What are you talking about? He asked me to look at the films, and it turned out that most of my vena cava was occupied with a very large clot. It was. I thought about bringing a Frankfurter <coughs> as a prop to show you. It was 12 and a half centimeters long, which is about yay big, and um, a centimeter and a half in diameter, occupied about 80% of the bore of, of the inferior vena cava. And I was in the operating room within two hours of that, having a device put in the, uh, to prevent it from embolizing. Um, and he started then grilling me about recent events, noticing there seemed to be a piece missing. And I had sheepishly to admit that I hadn't, hadn't thought about this. So that's now um, two years ago that the, this story reached that point. And so for the last two years, I've just been living with um, having some hardware that requires ongoing anticoagulation, having to participate in a lot of physical therapy to keep my legs from swelling, for which mainly I bicycle on a recumbent bike about 30 miles a day. And that usually takes care of it and also keeps me from weighing 400 pounds, which is a, a, a side benefit of it. Thank you, Dale.